Hi, look who's back. Cousin It is here. Yes, curious Cousin It. The minute I bring out newcomers, he has got to be right in the... What do you mean a quickie? This is not a quickie. He wants me to make it quick, get on with it. Um, I have to say hello. Right. And besides, they can skip forward. Just because you can't and you're going to have to listen to me babbling away now. All right? Fine. Don't worry about it. Hi, everybody. Anyway, yes, just a little bit of fun and games. We have a little update on the Orchid Room gems that I wanted just to run by you because it's been a long time. And let's get on with it. What do you... Seriously, you can't see. Are you kidding me? You need your glasses moved. Oh, my goodness. For real? Is that better? Look, you keep this up. This is not going to be quick. So, is that better? Ah, okay. My word. All right, let's start with Kaularthron by Kronutum. We saw this recently in my orchid training video, and it's doing great. It really is. The little growth when it came was down here in the pot, and look, it's come out, it's leafing out, it's producing wonderful roots. There's one crawling in through here. Some in the back might look a little bit tired by now, but this down here is looking great. I am not quite confident with my tug test, but it's giving me some resistance as I pull. The back obviously would be looser, but as from here, yeah, it's great. I love it. So that is Kaularthron by Cornutum. I'm enjoying seeing that this one has taken hold, especially on the time of year that it arrived. Cygnodes Wine Delight is on its way into dormancy. It was already matured when it arrived, so I just kept watering it to give it some sustenance for the transition. But now that the leaf has dropped, there was one here. I have stopped watering. There's a little bit of residual humidity, but that is it. We are done and we can wait and see what it wants to do next year. Good stuff. Then let's just get on with the Catacetum albovirens or albovirens. Same thing. It had already grown this when it arrived, but it's only just recently bulging out. So I've, I'm watering it still because it's showing a little leaf in there. I don't know if that's wishful thinking, but as it is bulging out at this point in time, none of the other leaves are yellow and keeping water in the reservoir for the time being. Catacetum albovirens. And then here, is that fast enough for you? Yes? Good three. Okay, here is my Maxima, Atlia Maxima cerula. When it came, this little growth here was down there and it had one viable root starting to go like it was going down in its growth habit. So I can't see anything at all in the pot. I have not once needed the support. I am not confident about it being in any kind of tug test. So I'm just going to leave that. But it's doing great. It's come up really nicely. And you can see from where the algae is that I've got it facing opposite from the light direction. So it grows up and into the pot hopefully, so it can stay there for another year or two. But the root that I see here, there, that's looking really, really good. Yeah, so he had Lea Maxima, little guy. It's doing great, so happy about that. And what we have the Cattleya Lodigesii crossed with Skinnery. This one is just a real trooper. Love how this one just came, conquered, settled. Boom. These two growths right here were half the size when they arrived and roots were already quite active. Proliferous roots. Really, really good. And they didn't skip a beat. They are in the pot. They are doing great. There's branching going on in there and everything. Oh, it's lovely. I don't even have to worry about it because 
Now I'm not gonna go overboard, but what? I can pull. I can really pull. This thing is locked in tight and it's matured the two new growths that it came with. Time to take off the sheaths, but this is locked in to the pot. Totally, totally root bound already. I love it. So, so happy how this one has progressed. So that's Lodigesii Skinnery. Fantastic. Fantastic. And here's my Ceratostylus rubra. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I don't know what I did. I really don't know what I did. I tried to grow it like a maxillaria, but oh, these two live next to each other in the same shelf. They're somewhat exposed to the elements, but much more protected. So it's not as hot, not as breezy, but they have a lot of air circulation. And uh, yeah, oh, I haven't done anything about it. I haven't taken it out yet. You never know with orchids, but I think this one is a goner and I'm so, so sorry, it's so bad. But that's, you know, showing the collection update of the Orchid Room gems and yeah, I don't, I don't think I did well here. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just so sorry. Mm, let's, let's, let's move on. Instead of me stuttering around trying to find something to excuse that, I'm so sorry. Um, one moment, I have to reach behind me. Check this out. Hey, hey. <laughs> how about that then? Look at her. So the orchid room named this Ninja Yellow. It's a Phalaenopsis no ID. Obviously I'm expecting yellow blooms, but uh, I would like to make this quick. Thanks to cousin It, who is badgering me like, yep, yep, yep. But no, um, she blasted a bud. And I think simply because I moved her back a shelf because the sun was already hitting her from the angle and I don't want that. But uh, that's why I sort of like, I'm a little bit hesitant to have her out here. And I have to show you. She is spiking of all things this time of year. But then again, I mean, why am I surprised? And you know, the orchid room where miracles happen. I mean, anybody seen her video about the tour of the conservatory and all her fowls are spiking and blooming? Um, yeah, so this little one obviously thinks it's still at home and hasn't quite realized where it is, which is great because she's doing wonderful. I have, uh, this leaf came when it was only little like that. So that's extended nicely. This one has grown out a little bit more than what it came with. It was about to there. So it's doing great. In the pot, I have two stories. One of things are doing wonderful. Let me get you in a bit closer without jiggling you too much. So one of, one story is everything's doing great right here. And I have some sphagnum moss for the humidity. And this keeps wanting to crawl up. Gotta watch that. And there's one root that wants to think it's going to be an aerial root. We'll see about that. But then I have some roots that are dying or have died right in here. You can see the brown there where there's also a kink. So that's going back. I am not going to intervene at this point. So one sphagnum moss is crawling up and one is scooting down. I am not going to intervene at this point because I want her to settle in. And here's another thought I had until I saw the video of the orchid room, that this could be a stress spike because obviously she's not settled in at all. And when I saw the spike come out, I'm like, okay, do I let her do that or do I top it off? Now I really do want to see the blooms. So I might do a little bit of both because if it's a stress spike, then she doesn't need to put all the energy into blooming. So I might let her bloom, I can take a picture, and then I will cut off the spike. And I'll be cutting off any subsequent spikes for the rest of the season, just because I want a strong 
healthy ninja yellow and not one that is stressed and feels the need to now spike because something's amiss. And we might wait another year to see them again. But anyway, we have, I would say, you know, 90% success. My Serata stylus, unfortunately, is not a success, which I am extremely, extremely sorry. I have to be very careful what I do here. 360 degree vision so I don't break anything. But all the other ones are doing really well and I'm extremely pleased about that. So yeah, Mr. Cousin It, you happy? You saw them? Was that fast enough for you? <laughs> Thank you everybody so very much for watching. I really appreciate that you joined us here today to have a quick look at the Orchid Room Gems and from Cousin It and myself, we wish you a wonderful day. Stay safe, take care, bye.